We are in Savannah, Georgia. We're only here for a day and a half, so we have to fit a lot in in a short amount of time. It's a short drive from St. Augustine to Savannah. Well, it's supposed to be a short drive. Yep, that's a sniper sitting on the side of the road. We stayed at Skidaway Island State Park just outside of Savannah, and it was beautiful. A little nerve wracking to drive an RV through, but beautiful. 56. That's right, that's still a good research to make Make it through those trees. Holy crap. Right outside. You've got lots of room on this side. It's a pull through sight, but look how short these are. Just like that, we are back to our water theme. I'm sitting here at our campsite and I'm hearing stuff in the bushes. to go explore the area. We made a quick stop at Bethesda, which is currently a private school, so I could take pictures of the beautiful oak-lined road. Our next stop was Bonaventure Cemetery, which became pretty famous from the novel Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I definitely recommend reading the book before visiting Savannah to get more details and stories of some of Savannah's real life characters. You can also watch the Clint Eastwood movie, but it's just not the same as the book. their free app to tour the cemetery while looking at all the ornate monuments and famous markers. Conrad Aiken had a pretty interesting life and he wanted his tombstone to be a bench so poetry lovers could sit on it and enjoy a few drinks. Johnny Mercer might not be a name that you recognize, but you definitely know him. He was actually the founder of Capitol Records and has a bunch of popular songs like Moon River from Breakfast at Tiffany's or Hooray for Hollywood. I actually wished we had more time to spend here, but we had to head into town for our dinner reservations. We had reservations at the Old Pink House, which was built in 1771, and it was many things throughout its history before it became the famous restaurant that it is today. It's as beautiful inside as it is outside, 
and you actually get that feeling that you are a guest in someone's southern mansion. The service was wonderful and they were extremely friendly and the food was excellent as well. It was one of my top experiences in Savannah. We had one last stop before we called it a night. And just like that, we are now in the laid back beach town of Tybee Island. This was my first time ever at a beach on the East Coast because I'm not gonna count the Florida Keys for that. I had read you can find shark's teeth washed up on the beach, so we were on the search. Unfortunately, no shark's teeth were found. We started our day at Factors Walk, and Factors Walk is a series of walkways and bridges, stairs, tunnels that were used when cotton was baled, factored, and sold in Savannah. Staircases, and I don't know if they're all called the Stone Stairs of Death or if it's a specific staircase that's called the Stone Stairs of Death, but they do all have these signs because they are very narrow, they are very steep, and they're awkward height, but they're also kind of fun.
I'm gonna take the elevator. They were such little people back in the day. How can these steps be so big? Yeah, but how could they reach them? These are the Klesky vaults. They were built in 1842, and the use of the vaults is still a mystery. They were actually being used for parking all the way up to 2012. They do have a creepy feeling about them, especially the weird horror movie opening that goes to the street above. Speaking of creepy, these tunnels are pretty creepy, even in the daylight. Watching these massive container ships pass by so closely was mesmerizing. And for some reason, I don't think of Savannah being a shipping port, but given its history, it makes sense. Next on our schedule was exploring the downtown and Victorian districts by bike or one wheel to see as many of Savannah's 22 squares and historic mansions as we could. Pirate's House was an inn built in 1753 for pirates and sailors, and it also has ties to Robert Louis Stevenson's novel, Treasure Island. For some reason, this house caught my eye, and I heard later it's one of Savannah's most haunted houses.